Hello all, welcome to the third part of the series. In this video, we will apply the derived equations on simple structures. Let's start with the numerical integration example. Consider the right side equation. What's omega? And terminology reminder. GPE means Gauss quadrature points per element. GPE is basically the number of points that your calculations will take place. Calculate the integral with given shape functions. Calculate the result with 1 Gauss point, 4 Gauss points, and 9 Gauss points. Round your results to 5th decimal place. Omega is our integration volume. A quadrilateral element consists of boundaries minus 1 to 1 for xi axis and minus 1 to 1 for eta axis. Therefore, the integration consists of two integrals. One is for xi, one is for eta. Because we are integrating over natural space, we do not calculate Jacobian matrix. The corresponding eta, xi and alpha values come from the Gauss quadrature weights or from Gauss point function. If you calculate the analytical solution, it's 2 divided by 9. For this integration, one Gauss point does not seem like it has adequate precision. However, if we increase the Gauss point per element, the calculation is nearly exact. Gauss quadrature is a good way to integrate. Why? Because computers do not understand integrals, they are only good at arithmetic operations, iterations and branch selection. Gauss quadrature is just a for loop with arithmetic operation, which is perfect condition for a computer. And this is the visualization of the problem. Shape function 1 multiply by the shape function 4 for linear quadrilateral element. We are calculating the integral for third image. In our second example, we will project stress strain values for a one dimensional row. Orange points are Gauss points and the blue points are nodes. Find the node 1 and node 2 values based on Gauss point values. Now you should try to construct mass matrix and force load vector. Hint, for loop has only one loop which is there is no loop. We will only calculate one matrix and done. And the answer is mass matrix was nothing rather than an integral of shape functions. Force vector was nothing rather than an integral of shape functions multiplied by stress strain field. This operation outputs 2 by 2 linear system because there are only two nodes. Now take a look at this more complex example. These are our elements to project. Again, orange points are Gauss points and the blue points are nodes. Find the node 1, node 2 and node 3 values based on the Gauss point values. Try to construct mass matrix and force load vector. Try to construct stress strain field function based on Gauss points. And in this situation, we have two loops and it can be written in a summation form rather than a for loop. And again, the answer is very similar to first example. Mass matrix was nothing rather than an integral of shape functions. And force vector was nothing rather than an integral of shape functions multiplied by a stress strain field. This operation outputs 3 by 3 linear system because there are only 3 nodes. Now after these two simple examples, we have some observations. And these are mass matrices are symmetrical. And if two nodes are not connected to each other, their mass matrix element is simply zero. If a node in a cross-sectional point of two elements, it receives two different values added together. We see duplicate N1 and N2 functions. The reason is that every element has its own shape functions independently. Element 1 approximates node 2 with its N2 shape function. However, element 2 approximates with its N1 shape function. Every element has its own stress strain field. And also we can use these observations on 2D examples. They are very similar. Consider the one linear quadrilateral element. This is our only element to project. Again, Gauss points are orange points and the blue points are nodes. 
find node 1, node 2, node 3 and node 4 values based on gauss points. And the questions are the same as former examples. Try to construct mass matrix and force vector. Try to construct stress strain field function based on gauss points. For loop has only one loop because there are only one element which is there is no loop. We only increase the dimension by one. Nothing has changed. Mass matrix was nothing rather than an integral of shape functions and force float vector is calculated by the same way as former examples. And this operation outputs 4x4 four four linear system because there are only four nodes. Now consider the two linear quadrilateral elements. These are elements the project, the hardest and the last example. Again, orange points are gauss points, blue points are nodes. We need to find node 1 to node 6 values based on gauss points and the questions are the same. Likewise, the answer is the same. However, in this situation, the summation looks a bit different. This operation outputs 6 by 6 linear system because there are only 6 nodes. We need to understand the assembly procedure to understand technique and implement it in larger scales. Consider the left side D2Q4N. This element has the nodes 1, 2, 3 and 4. Thus, it is only able to make contributions to certain coordinates of the mass matrix. You can try to write every possible permutation of two elements for the list 1, 2, 3 and 4. These locations in the mass matrix can be affected by the first element. Likewise, try to write down all permutations of two elements of the list 2, 5, 6 and 3. These locations in the mass matrix can be affected by the second element. You can reduce the cost by only considering upper or lower triangular parts of the global matrix because it's symmetrical. Nodes 2 and 3 receives two contributions from different elements, therefore we sum the con contributions. The same logic applies also to the force load vector. We also have observations in two dimensional examples. Again, mass matrices are symmetrical. If two nodes are not connected to each other, their matrix element is simply zero. If a node in a cross-sectional point of two elements, it receives two different values added together. We see duplicate n1, n2, n3 and n4 shape functions. The reason is that every element has its own shape functions independently. Element 1 approximates node 2 with its n2 shape function. However, element 2 approximates with its n1 shape function. Every element has its own stress strain field and the algorithm is pretty iterative and repetitive. Our computations was based on field shape functions, in other words, G function. And what are the stress strain fields? We can consider the simplest quadrilateral element. And this is the field function defined at Gauss points. It approximates a certain field based on Gauss point values. And how do we obtain shape function from them? We need to just delete the Gauss point terms. And there exist three main rules for a shape function. You can check three rules for these shape function. To understand field shape functions better, let's visualize a one. How would look a complete field function? Certainly, the function describes a surface in three-dimensional space. Try to imagine, draw and predict this field function for a linear quadrilateral element. This is the plot of the shape function. The shape functions are used to approximate a surface. And this surface can be calculated for every element independently. However, these surfaces would not be continuous unless you increase the number of elements to infinity. Our technique is used to smoothen these independent stress strain fields but on nodes. And for the last part, we will see how to implement this technique on Python and we will see which aspects of programming is needed, which variables do we need, will we build a library for us or we will see general procedure to overcome issues. Thank you for watching.